forward in, in my journey and in my understanding, uh, both at sort of abstract philosophical levels, but more importantly, at the, the felt experience of my own hands and the people in my life and so on, I do come uh, inescapably to the, to the conclusion that living a sort of despiritualized life and a life of ignorance and, and ultimately choosing uh, sorrow and darkness is actually a choice that people make. And it, it's as much a, a consent to that as it is a, a willful choice. And that's part of the problem with, um, if you like, a despiritualized life, uh, an unmagicked life, is that it's, it's a choice that we're asked to make as part of the conditioning in early on in society. And, of course, as, as young men and women, we think that it's just what people do and it prepares us for the world and equips us for being a young man or a young woman and being an adult and so on, is to be realistic and is to do what we need to do and put up with things and just keep a stiff upper lip in the classic sort of British sense or whatever. And this choice to reject the magic of life by rejecting knowing ourselves is really at the root of what creates, as I described earlier, the void. Because it's in this disavowal that this void comes about, essentially. So there's a, a distinct correlation, as I've said before, between the, the disownment of your own inner world and the sort of deterioration of, of the outer world. And as I've said many times, you know, for, for people who want someone to blame about the state of the world, this is bad news, really, because it means that it's, it's kind of our fault. So there's no one to point the finger at except yourself, really. So at the, at the fundamental level, this philosophy means that we are, we are each um, responsible directly for everything that occurs in the world so it's, it's not them it's us so any polarity of you know calls to arms and fight this system and combat this and combat that is really exactly what you know the the machinations and the mechanics of the control system as it as a as a technical apparatus they love that they love to have sides that fight against each other so it's important to contemplate that this left, right, capitalist, socialist, good, evil debate is an entirely sort of fake dichotomy, a, a real magician's misdirection, a sleight of hand that is put upon us to, to show us that, um, you know, there's, there's, there's nothing going on and you can either choose one side or the other and just, just concentrate on that. But the, the fundamental starting point for change is to understand that to know something, we must first know ourselves. And to heal something, especially when we look at the state of the, the, the planet today, we must first heal ourselves. And that's where it all comes from. So the, the, the sort of cosmological cause and effect emanates from, from consciousness. So this is the ultra soup side of it, um, the higher dimensional side of it, where the state of things is waiting to be shaped by consciousness. And that, that soup element of it is just like a little mental image to suggest that it's in that state of, you know, viscosity or whatever, waiting to take form. So it's extremely important to understand that what we talked about last time, you know, the inner work and healing oneself and working on oneself it is the starting point, really, for creating a platform to say, if you do want a life that is more fulfilling and um, more exciting and more uh, rewarding, then it's important to clear house and to do some kind of rewiring. But more than anything is to make the choice, is to take the decision, make the choice to say, I'm going to take my existence seriously, not in a particularly solemn way. One doesn't have to walk around with a, you know, a, a grave look on one's face as a sort of, you know, Nietzschean philosopher necessarily, but to take it seriously in the sense that it is a, a, a very important project. It's a very important art project, and it's the thing we are here to do in a sense, and it has significance, and it is substantive. And I think a lot of people really don't feel that about themselves. Certainly in the mainstream, they definitely don't. But even in the um, alternative communities, 
um, the spiritual communities. A lot of people understand at an intellectual level what this means to, to the journey and transcendence and um, philosophical, spiritual movement and so on. But they don't actually feel it. They don't feel it in the bones and in the heart. And again, a realization I've come to, and this is a funny one to, to say really, but I'm, I must say it because I feel it is, it is real, is that the difference between um, just thinking something and thinking, yeah, well, I know that, but I don't really feel it. The reason people don't feel it is because they actually don't really want it. So a lot of people are not quite ready to commit to the decision to lead a spiritual life because at the sort of, I don't know, maybe genetic level, there is an understanding that once you embrace that, it changes things fundamentally. And all the routines and friendships and associations and systems of normal life change, period, forever. And most people are not actually quite ready for that and what they they're quite happy to do instead is you know put on a kind of groovy t-shirt and go somewhere for a course or read a special book or have a few conversations and you know drink some green tea or whatever and play around with the edges of it and do the things that look like it but actually it's it's not an internal commitment they're not making the choice so to feel it you actually have to take it into your hands and go with it. And that is something, again, that I would suggest a lot of people are not fully prepared to do. And that, again, is, is, this, is this gravitation of the void to say, that is such a strange thing to contemplate. It's such an emptiness that um, the irony is that you can disguise that and um, escape it by filling your mind with all the accoutrements and all the accessories of enlightenment without actually doing it itself. And that is something that has been acknowledged throughout the centuries, really, by many teachers and students. And it's a very funny thing to say because probably, like yourself, I meet some excellent people in the course of my work and travels and sometimes I forget that, you know, they are a tiny minority, really. And living here just right on the edges of New York City, you know, the last five days I've been right in the middle of um, Greenwich Village and uh, Manhattan. Uh, and I was in the Bronx yesterday. And it's a completely different universe. You know, the, the, the void is dominant and people are spending their time moving away from that in any way that they can, whether it's a, a busy career or whether it's hedonism and, uh, you know, decadent lifestyles or just despondency is also a strategy to keep away from the void, you know, because you're so miserable, so damned miserable that that overtakes the fear of, of the void and of this, you know, disownment of the spiritual. And it, it is funny, um, <laughs> funny is probably not quite that, quite the right word, but it is very odd to see that disparity, that huge juxtaposition between um, people who have really taken the brave decision to change their lives and move forward and the people who haven't. And almost without exception, whenever I come across the people who have taken the decision, it's kind of surprised them what a deep effect it's had because it does change everything. It changes your relationships with your family with yourself with your body with your sexuality with your food with your music with everything completely everything and it's it's kind of like a, a roller coaster ride and once you start it you cannot stop it it's, it just sets off and that's why i have such an incredible admiration for anyone who chooses to do this crazy thing because um it takes a lot of courage and a lot of commitment and that's why um, there is a tradition in the spiritual field that anybody who's doing this, as far as I'm concerned, always deserves supporting and deserves acknowledging because that's one of the things that makes it all worthwhile. That when you're doing this thing, you can be seen and you are recognized by other people who are doing it that you are seen and respected for what you're doing. So I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. Now, this, this thing we're talking about, 
kind of being authentic and, and 